Well, hello. It's Dave here, fat lad, with his bike, not on it. I've had a few inquiries about these strange and weird and wonderful camera angles I've been getting, like this one. folks have said, have you got somebody in front of you? No. What I'm using is an Insta360 1X 360 degree camera and it's this little beastie here. That's, I'll show you a bit closer. Now this this here is the camera at the moment held in its little its little pouch and it's currently on charge. You can tell because the red light's flashing which means don't cross the road but it also means it's getting charged. And it's, it's, it's very small, it's very slim, uh, two lenses on it, one either side, 220 degree lenses, um, power into the inside, battery, and I'm using that together with various bits and bobs of connectors, like this, and it's pull, to get it connected onto the front of the bike. I'll show you. Now first off you'll see down here just there is a ram mount one inch ball this beast here and what happens there you mount one of the adapters in the adapter you also have this which is a one inch ball with a a camera mounting screw in it just like that and you can mount that so that it fizzles about all over the place let's just get it on gently for the time being and zoom out a bit now that that's in place I can now screw the pole onto the whole thing now there are some folks that will use that just as is um, working on the basis that it, it is actually quite solid but when you get it up to a decent height it will start wobbling a little bit I can screw it in tight like so and it, it might work but it needs extra support so the idea is to organize it such that this top one inch ball which screws straight in um, will support this part of the uh, of the pole, the extension stick, the selfie stick if you want that the whole camera mounts to. Let's show you that. What I've got here is a RAM connector and a RAM grippy connector. This will grip onto anything and I'm just going to connect the two up. First onto the one inch ball, second the grippy connector and then screw them together, gently of course, don't want to go mad, and then angle everything. So now we bring the pole up and through and get it where I want it and that's going to be, I think, about it. So we just screw this up and then I'm looking for the camera to be pretty much centrally mounted there. That's how it's going to work. So as you can see, it's only just say in front of the tyre. I'll try and show you. The next move, of course, has to be to put the camera on. 
and we've still got everything a little bit flexible yet because I want to see by eyeballing it all up where it all sits and do I need to move anything around because the stitch line which you can't really see anyway but I want the stitch line to be in a, in a mode that doesn't stop me getting to see what I want to see. You can though see that's the distance between the windshield and the camera if I use my arms it's not very far at all. Um, right so that's probably about where I want it so what I'm going to do is tighten this one because that's in position and tighten this one because that's in position and then that's it it's it's almost not quite simple I just need to drop this one in a little bit further that's it now it's central now of course these cameras only have a very short battery life the last supposedly about an hour well I don't trust that so I've done something else as well from Amazon I got these leads this is a USB micro USB but it's it's uh, I was going to say genderless it, it doesn't care which orientation it's in it's an orientation free micro USB and the beauty about the Insta One X is that it will power externally however one thing you've got to be careful about of course is that the camera doesn't see the lead so you've got to wind it quite carefully around the selfie stick it's called the invisible selfie stick and you'll see what happens in a minute when I shoot some actual video and you'll see what goes on so keeping it quite tight I like to take it down between the little jaws there under here and then just wrap it once around here and then bring it back over to my 12 volt outlet which I've got a USB adapter into so that I can power it direct from the bike and that's brilliant that sets it up really nicely so let's power the bike on so the bike up and at the same time I need to open up my phone and then open the Insta 1X application. At the same time I'm going to switch the phone on, the uh, Insta 1X on, Insta 360 1X. So press the button, tell it to connect, you, obviously you're going to do all this before you start riding and it's searching for the previous camera used and it's now being powered, we'll join that straight away on there that's the view out of the uh, the Insta360 camera now what I'm going to do is select 5.7k 30 frames per second go back to mode video get rid of that I'm going to start it recording and I'm going to do something this is what I do every time I ride set it away now it's recording and I need to clap and that's so that I can sync the cameras up. So as you can see, that's now there. You can go around in 360, it's not a problem. I can walk about the place and the camera can follow me. So I can stand here and present and uh, everything's good. Or I can come across here and you'll see me messing on with the camera. I'm going to go wide and move it around there. So, yes. The way it's working at the minute, this is me stood in front of the Insta360. It's there. And I'm going to try and do some clever stuff with screens and what have you to try and show you how it all works. But the beauty about it is when I move around to the back of the bike and out a shot of the main camera and sit up on the bike, it's got me perfectly. And I'll show you some zooms in and zooms out on this little bit. Zoom in, zoom out and you can see exactly how it works. So that's how that mounts there. Here's the uh, Insta360 ONE X in a different position. Uh, it's one I like to call get you through the traffic quick position. Work that one out for yourself. And here's some idea of what it looks like when you're riding. I shall have to climb upon the sickle. Oh, thank God it's on the centre stand. Right, so, and now it's recording. 
I'm talking to you over there, it's looking down from here and it'll be able to see all over everywhere. And again, it kind of looks as though it's not on the bike, as you'll see by the footage that I put up on the timeline. So there you go, it's as easy as that. You can mount it all over the place and it'll give you some really good views. You can mount these things anywhere you like. If you've got the mounting space, it'll fit and there'll be all kinds of different views that you can get. What I wouldn't do is mount it across the handlebars because you don't want anything to get in the way with that kind of thing. In fact, I wouldn't mount it on the handlebars anywhere. It doesn't really make any sense. So there you go. Now, of course, with the Insta 361X mounted here, and running on the bike as it does, I can get all kinds of really nice footage. The question next is, how do I edit it? Let's go to the desktop and find out, shall we? Now, the observant amongst you will have noticed I use a Mac. This is a MacBook Pro. Um, it's an old one, 2014, but it'll do the job quite nicely. So, here we have the camera. So, plug it in. And you'll see that the light's gone red, that says it's charging. But when I switch it on, the light goes blue, and you should be able to see. There you are. U disk, and the blue light is flashing. U disk, and the blue light is flashing. That means it's in disk mode. So if we now go to my file manager, Finder and have a look in Untitled because that's what it is in DSIM camera 01. If I zoom in a little, these are the files today's files that I have recorded. They are dot INSV. So we have three, four, and we have four and five. Now, you'll see that there's just one of the three. That's done in 4K. It leaves you with one file. But in the 5.7K, you have two files, and they need to be stitched. So let's do something about that. And you do that with Insta360 Studio 2019. I shall just move that down out the way. Let's zoom out a little and you can see what's going on. So it wants me to drop the files I'm going to use over here. So let's do that exactly. Four and five, shift and tap, and drop them there. And as you can see, it's loading the files. And there it is, that's it. Let's put a little bit of volume on. One of the quirks of this thing is it's very low volume. And this is what I was doing. I shall output these, so I need to click on the two of them, that and that, and then go to the yellow start export up at the top. I don't want to change this. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, OK. Now, the target resolution is original. That's where I want it. The bit rate, original bit rate, yeah, we'll keep with the original bit rate. I don't need to lock direction, and I'm not going to use the near day logo, uh, but I do want to put them somewhere different. Review. Create it. And off we go. Click OK. And as you can see, it will now batch export a lot. And there's the, uh, the rate that it's going at. I'll zoom you in a tad. So you can see how quick it is. It's not the fastest on the planet. Um, they're fairly short videos, not very long at all. Um, but that's going to take probably 20 minutes to output all of that little lot. So we'll come back when that's done. Right, so here we are in Final Cut Pro and I've got now um, the 
SD card from the camera is actually in there so I'm going to pull in everything I've recorded and it starts from here so down to there import selected in they go now while that's happening I can also start the import off those files that we uh, that we produced and they've gone into here into review and if I click on it you can see that it gives me the full 360 degree view on both of them so that's all good um, and we'll import a lot of them and they're going into the same place now I don't want them in 360 degree view that's not what I'm going to do at all and you'll see how it all comes together very very shortly and you can see straight away on there that we are recording that's the view out of the, uh, the Insta 360 camera now what I'm going to do is select what I want it to be filming in and I don't want it for I think the clap's around here yeah. now it's recording and I need the clap there's the clap so what I now do is make my timeline much bigger and then I need to find the point on the video, the 360 video, where I actually clapped. That's it. So that's my in point and I'll drag that down. Drop it in place. And then I need it to render out its volume. I'm just going to increase the volume up to 12 dB so that I can see what happens where and in fact there's the spike so now what I do is I'll put that marker right there align the spike there and we should see as we play in and that's so now that needs to render so just to speed it up a little bit I'll chop that click there and it's not properly brought in yet so we'll just render that selection and it's quickly done right now let's see and that's so that I can see that's it it works and that's so that now what you may not have noticed is that there is this little, I don't know what you'd call it, a little flowery shaped thing down here. And that, if I click up here, is the orientation button. So I can now scroll around and pick up exactly what I want. And the clever part over here in the orientation. Um, section I can move further away and in fact 127 degrees is roughly GoPro size but look at that there now that's a long long way back so there you have it that's um, the workflow that I use obviously the edit process to produce the video is much longer than what you've seen um, and what you'll be seeing now is a product of what I was just editing. I can't quite work that out myself anyway. It is the way it is. Um, that 360 degree camera, the Insta360 ONE X, has provided me the means to get all kinds, all manners of amazing shots. And I'm hoping that everybody enjoys what they see. Do leave your comments in the comments section down below. Let me know what you think about 360 cameras versus GoPros versus 
Sony cameras versus all of that kind of thing. And uh, let's have a conversation about this. Do you like the look that there's another cameraman following me about or leading me about either way on? Uh, what do you think of the uh, the little slow down cam position? Do you think that'll work? Let me know how you feel in the comments down below. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you to everybody that subscribed already and those of you that are going to subscribe because you are aren't you if you've enjoyed the film leave us one of them big thumbs up thank you very much appreciate those uh, or a thumbs down either one as long as you interact leave something that'll be brilliant um, and until next time i've been a fat lad on a bike dave and i'll catch up with you on the next video until then ride safe see you later bye <laughs>